Okay, so today we're going to talk about polishing stuff. Um, basically, we are going to try add some small effects to make the transition look uh, more natural. Also, we're going to add the uh, we're going to also going to add the uh, animated UI components and uh, button clicking clicking sound. So first, um, make sure you already download the package. This one and make a new project. Make sure it's 2D. Uh, I'm going, going to call it Polishing Workshop. So creating, creating it will take a little bit long time. So for I'll explain what, what does it mean to make the transition more natural. So basically, we're going to add a black in black out effect. Basically, like when we loading a scene, the, the screen will turn black and turn back to turn back to normal after the scene's finished loading. And also, we're going to add a pop in pop out effect for for manual. Like for example, pause manual, and uh, if we're trying to pause, the pause menu will pop on the screen, not simply this, not simply appear. As it, like as it does before. Those are two main stuff for making the transi transition more nat more naturally. And for UI UI anima animation, basically just no animator for UI components. So we're going to make a. We're going we're going to also going to manually make a make an animation. So since it's finished loading, um, going to a package. This time we need to open a pack package folder and drag everything into the the set folder. Uh, there are two things here. We'll I will simply delete the the old thing like this. Yeah, these things. Uh, I will rename this thing's name to things, things one to things, and uh, just make sure I delete the normal original sample thing. Don't save. And because we're kind of changing the changing the order in the we're kind of changing the order in the old in the old thing. So because normally the resources shouldn't be shouldn't be at the same level of of the other other folders. So basically what I'm going to do, I simply delete the old one and uh, drag a new one in there. Um, before I explain what's going on, um, we, need, we need to do something first before we start before we start doing anything. So first thing is, first thing is I, need to drag, I need to drag the sample thing. So First thing is we need to create two new layer because as we as we always do, first player, second is role because originally the game doesn't have these two folders. These two folders are we add in the previous in the previous workshop. But this is a new this one is a new project. So basically, role and player are in the right in the right layer right now. Next thing we're going to do is like in edit on project settings. So still in quality, um, disable anti-aliasing. And uh, in physics 2D, make sure it's 2D, disable player drill collision. And next next step we're going to do is like we, we drag main menu and sample thing in the build settings. So make sure main menu is at zero, build setting, sample thing is at one. So when we load the thing, Things won't won't be messed up. So this should be this should be done for preparing. Let's get into get into the game to make sure everything runs correctly. I think this one is I think pre preparation and preparing is done. Uh, I'll go, go back go back to main menu to explain what's going on. So you can see some difference. So first I change main from canvas to to a panel because 
we need, I need to make sure I load, I load game object into the, instantiate game object into the canvas, canvas game object. So I can, when the screen turn, screen can normally turns to black and turns, turns back to normal. It covers everything, the, covers everything the same. If it's not in the UI, UI can put, it's not, if, if it's not, not in the canvas, it won't show in the UI. And that's the main reason I change UI to canvas and change panel to, change panel to, I mean change, change main and settings to, to panel. So next, also the second thing is we also have a effect volume. I'll show you, I'll show you later. So first thing, we need to create a script. I'll simply call it fade. So basically in this one, I'll create a serialized field. I call it, so it will be an image. Oh, I forget, I'm using, using UI. So I call it, call it image. It's an image, image component. So basically the, the way we're going to make it turns to black and turns back to normal is we simply, we have a black, black image and we increase its increase or decrease its alpha value to to adjust its visibility. We also need a speed. It will also be a sterilized field. Uh, I'll make the speed initially at, initially at 0.5. And well, also, we also need a boolean value because I want I want to adjust is is this going to going to black turns to black or turns back to normal. So I'll make make it initially initially to be true. The next thing in updates we say if phase true, we'll increase the we'll increase the alpha value. Wait, decrease sorry decrease the alpha value. So basically in here adjusting alpha value of the coloring is in the image is kind of kind of odd because the Im the alpha value of image of the coloring image is is read only. So we need to oh. we need to take out the color first, and we increase the we will increase the alpha value of the of this color and and put it back in, kind of. So different, different, different from, oh, not this one. <laughs> different from what we can see here. We can see here is actually, the alpha value is from uh, zero to 255. Different from here, the alpha value in code is actually from zero to one. So we need to make sure it's always between the two value here. So it'll be minus, I think. So I'm going to use clamp. So in else we simply do another do the opposite way oppos opposite way um we add, add speed. And at the end we put put it back in. Okay, I guess should be okay right now. Let's see how it does. And um, before we actually make make it work, we, need, we also need a panel. We need, also need a new panel. Uh, U, in UI panel, and uh, for this panel, I'm going, I'm going to make it black. I'm going to call it fade. And um, I'll adjust its alpha to 255, so it can be completely black and covers everything. Because in UI, the thing on the, in the bottom will show above the thing on the top. So make sure you put fit fit down there. If you put put it on the top, you can still see the still, still see the thing thing back there. And then we add our fake component and put our, put the image here. Okay, let's see. I hope it works. Yep. 
So this for getting. This is for getting. Um, what I'm going to do is I make make the fader game object. I mean make make the fader prefab. So we can use it use it easier. Actually, I don't need I don't need to put fader in resources. I think I can simply put in put in prefabs. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so if we do this, you will find a problem. You find we can't click on click on the button right now because basically this this panel it covers everything. So we we need to destroy destroy it after it turns to it completely turns to invisible. I'm going to do is like in here I'll do a if statement. If fit is true, then I'll do if image dot color equal to um, zero. And if fit is false, I will say oh sorry dot a. Forget it. Then I'll do another way, equal to 1. If it does, then I'll do destroy game object. And I prefer to add a return here. Though I'm not sure that we'll, we'll actually, actually reach, reach, reach this part. Let's take a look again. Let's take a look again. Look again. Yep, it destroyed. You can click it right now. So but yeah, this is a this is a effect button here, but it doesn't work right now because I uh, we don't have any sound effect at the moment. We'll we'll do it in this workshop. So right now I the thing I also need to do is I add a turns to black effect. So then when doing when doing Switching thing kind of no, looks more natural. The way I'm going to do is uh, I create another another script called shift scene fade. Uh, what I'm going to do is in fade I add, add another another method, but instead instead of like instead of normal me method, I'm going to make it protected and virtual, so we can override in the in the in the child in a child script. I call it trigger. So basically in the in the parents, like in this in this in this class, the trigger doesn't do anything. But in shift shifting fade, um you inherit the previous one. You inherit um uh, fade. And we do override. We override the trigger. Yep. We don't need to do base because there's nothing in the base. So in trigger, we need the thing we need to do is like we need we, we need to switch thing this one. So we we need to we need to, we need to have a while to 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 see which what what is the thing. We also need a we also need a method to set the thing. Simply do this thing equals thing. And in trigger, so basically it will trigger when before destroy. So we we'll simply do thing thing switch uh, thing, switching thing. Um, for doing sw switching scene, we need to do, we we need to include the uh, scene management. I mean, we using. So, I show you the previous one. We simply do scene manager dot the low scene dot scene. And this one should be okay, I guess. The next step we need to do is we you. Modify game manager, game manager, because in game manager here, oh wait, actually, no, we need to the, the one we need to modify is the UI control. 
So for load thing, instead of do scene manager the load thing, when you the thing you, we are going to do is like we instantiate the oh I forgot forgot made the make the prefab. I'll simply modify on this one. I'll do unpack and uh, remove this one. Can I save the script? Yeah, I did. Put shift thing here. Shift thing here. I I mean I'll make fade to false because we're not we're not going going to invisible but going to back black. Yeah, and this one I'll do shift thing fade. Putting I'm uh, putting the prefab resources I mean. In here, we, in, instead of doing load thing, we doing we we instantiate the shift thing in the in the in the UI. So make sure it's SCAM object because of the thing we instantiate. It will only be, it will be as, it will, it will be the way the thing we load is always a, it's always an object, not a, not a specific type. In the second one, we're going to say in the U, the game object UI, new UI game object. Make sure it's, it's transform, not not a game object. We need, we need to instantiate something to to transform. And the reason we put, the, re, the reason we value equal. Equal of the fade equal to this to this one because when you do get components shifting fade and uh, set thing here. Ah, uh, let's take a try. Wait, what? what, what? Something happened. <laughs> oh right, I forgot. I forgot to delete, delete this one. Oh, and the other thing is, I need to make sure this one's initial value is, value is, is initial alpha value is, uh, is zero because when it reaches the which when it reach one, it will start 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 switching. Yeah, and yeah, this one works okay, but I think if you're looking carefully, you will find one thing, like the, the main menu just simply pop back to, before switching. It would be more obvious, obvious, obvious if I add the fading to this one. All right, before doing this, make sure to change change the canvas to UI because that's how it works. Wait. Let's take a look again so it can be more obvious. Yeah, you can see the main menu will flash for a short time and then switching scene. The reason is the game object was de deleted, was destroyed before doing scene switching. I mean, theoretically, it's, it's doing after trigger, but I'm not entirely sure how it works. So basically, we need we need to make sure when we're doing when we're doing shift scene fade, this game object will, will not be destroyed. But simply, but rewrite the update will take a long take a long time. Actually, it should be fixed update. I'm sorry. Rewriting a fixed update will take a long time. So, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to simply add a protective protective value, protective protective boolean value called just simply called destroy, and initially it will equal to false. I mean true, actually true. Sorry. So in here, if destroy is true, then we de it will dis destroy the game object. If it's not, then don't do it. 
and instead we do destroy equal to false. Oops, it's a Y. Let's take a look again. See how it works. How it does right now. Oh wait. I got a typo. All oh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, this time, let's take a look. Yep. More natural, more natural right now. Make sure I save it. So, you know, next thing we need to do is like, we need to do the manual pop-out. For doing this, let's switch to sample thing. And what I'm going to do, I think, I will, I will hide I will disable phase right now because waiting for it to turn to invisible it takes takes a lot of time actually. <laughs> so for doing that one, I will create another script called I will call it panel pop. So in panel pop, basically we, the way we are going to do it is we will add. We, I mean, I will add a an empty parent for each panel. I mean, for each each menu. Pause panel, and this one is win panel. This one will be fill panel. And for each of them, we are going to set the scale to zero. I mean only x and y value. The z value doesn't matter here because this is a 2D up, 2D um, this is a 2D project. So the way it will work is like so same as before, we will do I would do a so as fill bool um Pop. So basically, this this value will control is it popping out or popping low or is it popping out or not? And we also need a speed. I'll do one right now, and in in start I'll do speed times equal to time to delta time. I'll explain why later. And the other thing we need is a actually I don't think we need we need, an, need another one. So basically in here what I'm going to do is oops if hop is true then increase the uh, increase the transform scale. Yeah. Local scale plus equal to because the scale is between zero and one, so I'm also going to make a clamp clamp for this. And I put I put one for for Z because actually I think simply left Z simply don't don't put Z is also also okay but I will still still do it just in just in case if I let Z Z equal zero will cap will cause some unknown stuff and if in else I will still do the same thing but instead I'll, instead of plus I'll do minus this time.
and we we we'll need to make sure it won't start before before we set up before we want it starts. So in so we need two methods. The first one is called set active. Basically, we we set pop to true and uh, we let the child equal we 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 enable a child because. We want to deactivate the pol deactivate deactivate this menu even if their scale is equal to zero. Oops. And in the last step, we need a boolean while here. Equal to false in default. Sorry, my my number log is really close to my backspace. So when I press the backspace, I really, I sometimes will press the number log. So set equal to false in default. Basically, if set if set never equal to true, then just simply simply return. The reason I'm not using fixed update here because when this menu popping out. The time scale will equal zero. Basically, when time scale equal zero, the fixed update will, will not run because it's relying rely on re relying on time. So that's why I'm using using update here. Update will not be affected by time scale. So in, at the last, we, we check if pop if manual is at the right position. Actually, I don't need to do it. Let me try. If, what if I don't don't do it? By the way, we we also need another another method called selling inactive. Basically, power equals false, and uh, all right, I still need it, but I still need a check, but it will it will only. It will only for when local scale equals zero. So basically, if pop is not equal to true and uh, local scale scale equal to new vector zero zero one, then in this case, we would, the thing we will do is like we. We disable the. Oh wait. We disable a child. And to be honest, I think I also need need a. I also need a check for. I also need another another if for. Checking if it's reached the maximum because a new set set a new set set to false. Just forget it. This one will be pop and one one. I think. It should be fine right now. Let's see how it let's see how it works. Oh right. The other thing is we we also need to change the UI control. Okay, actually change the game manager. In this one here we say the components panel pop select oh wait this one is saying inactive. And the following, the pause will be set active. And we also need to change something here. Oh, I, I forgot the win and fail. So basically, in win and fail, it will, it will also be set active. And let's see. 
So in in the manager here, we need to make sure we change the pause when I fill to a panel. Because when we get component, the component will be on the panel, not in the not in the manual. Because the manual are disable disable. Even even if we're trying to get something component disable in in disable game object, it like even if we're trying to set something, it will not work. Because the update the update method will not Actually, the, the component itself won't even, won't even running. Okay, let's see. Is it, is it gonna work? Oops, something wrong. Something's wrong. Why is it getting so big? Wait, uh, let, let me see. Something not right. Something isn't right. Wait. What? It's getting out of range. I mean, it's got getting not limited by one. Oh, I get it. it should be plus equal. It should be equal. So let's take let's take a look again. Hope this time it will work. Intended. Yep. Why well, is popping off? I'm popping back back in. And let's take a look at the wing on, wing and fill. Actually, wing and fill should works works in the same way. Let's just take a look at the fill. Yeah, this one's also done, I think. The next thing I'm, we are going to do is animate the UI component. Um, yeah. I'll save the thing, thing here. Switch back to main. Also, I'm going to simply remove the fade because waiting it to getting invisible taking a taking some time I don't want to wait I'm a I'm, a, I'm an impatient guy <laughs> um, so the way I'm going to animate the UI components basically we're trying to manually make an anima animation like this code is not this code are not my code I find it online um, I, I think I managed to understand it. However, when I'm trying to find that code again, I cannot find find the code I find anymore. I'm really thanks to the guy who who writes this code. I call it UI animation. Yeah, this code helped a lot when it helped me a lot in the game jam. <laughs> Yeah, you are you are animation. So we also need to using the UI you you using engine dot UI. So basically, what we'll do is like we have a serialized field and uh, have a sprite have a sprite sprite array. Also, we have an image and. We also need an FPS. Basically, means how many pictures do we want to play for each second. I want to play two pictures in each, in each second. So that's. I think this this should be an ideal number in my actual testing. So also, we're going to do fixed update. In fixed update, we oh I also need also need to have have a time. So basically, what we're going to do is like we check if time dot time minus time is larger than one divided by FPS. 
We also need a, need an index. No, you forget us. If this is true, we in increment an index and checking if it all all bounds. I will use large larger larger equal to because sometimes I just worry in some case in the index will go go over the will not be actually equal to the length. So I will really do larger or equal to. If it go if it all bound, simply reset it. And at last, we'll say image dot sprite equal to image dot image index. That's kind of how it works. Uh, let's try. It. Wait, what? Oh, I press a shift when I'm trying to add a column. <laughs> so let's try to put in the animated UI in main menu and add a image. I'll do 40, 20, like 40 as wide, 20 as height. And try and put it here. Try not cover the start, the start gain. Actually, I think 3015 might be better. So we're trying to, this one I'll call it animate then add our ui animation code in here so because we already got two textures in te two image for te in texture thanks to hayden he makes it hey hayden mm -hmm. thank you for making the texture thank you so in this one we add two picture here. And make sure we assign the image components. Uh, let's take take a look at look at it in game. Oh wait, I forgot. Forgot one stuff. We can see the car running pretty fast. I forgot one stuff. I need to reset the time. I, I made this mistake three times. I'm like trying to do two demos and and the, and the actual walkthrough. Then I make this mistake in three times. Yeah, you can see the cars. I play, I'm playing in Maximus, so you guys can see clear. You can see the car is animated. Then the next step we, I'm going to do is I'm making the car only appear when you put our put a mouse on the start game button. For achieving this, we'll, we need another we need another um, script. I'll call it um, I don't know how to call it. You guys have any, have any good idea? Mouse hover handler? Mouse what? Mouse hover handler? Hover? Is this spelled H-O-V-E-R? Sorry, actual or F O. Uh, Sorry, actual V E R or F O V E R. H H O V V E R handler. Good name. <laughs> so inside this one, we are going to using event system. And for doing this, we need we need two more. We need to inherit two more classes. Before doing that, I'm going to create a serialized field so we can manually assign the assign the car on it, assign the car to it. For the first first we need to inherit I point I pointer into handler. Um Yeah, sorry this one is Chinese, but I think you guys can find the same option in the same position. So basically in here we, we simply set act on click to we simply enable on click. And because 
You can see this one is only for inter-handler. Inter we also need an exit handler. In this one, we simply disable on, disable the on-click. And of course, we need to make the on-clicks disable at the, at the beginning. So we simply disable here. Let's see how it, how it works right now. Oh, something. Oh, right, I forgot, I forgot to set it. <laughs> I forgot, forgot to set it. Uh, now, yeah, here, mouse hover handler. And here's the unclick. I mean, it's actually not unclick, it's just, just uninter. Yep. You can see the car when, when you put the mouse on it. Okay, the last thing we are going to do today is we are going to add a button click sound effect. Uh, this one, there are two ways. Uh, the first way, that's what I su suggest you guys to do is we put an audio source in each button. Because if, if you do this, we can do a unique sound for each, we can do a unique sound for each button. If possible, we only have one sound effect right now. But if you're actually making a game, if you put audio sounds in, in the button, you can you can have a unique unique sound effect for each button. The other way is, is we simply put a general sound, general general audio so, audio source for the button. But that one is not suggested because you can only use one sound effect for it, for all the buttons. So I'm going I'm going to try to do the first one, trying to do the first one. Actually, in the, in the demo, I, I'm doing a second one, but I'm trying. I'm trying to do the first one here. Um, we already have a effect. We already have effect audio mixer here. So I'm going to do is in start we create a audio audio source. And all your clip will be the button. Make sure it's not play on wake, play on, on wake. And the output will be effect master. We do the same same thing to all the buttons here. Yep, and the next thing I'm going to do is in UI control, uh, add, we add one line to all the buttons here. So, trans, wait, get components, uh, audio source, and run the play method. I'm going to copy paste this line to every button in here. And make sure you also do the same thing in Access. Wait, what's that? I think there's only one button in access. Yep. Uh, let's try to see how it does right now. Wait, what? I'm not playing. What the hell? Oh, I know what's going on right now. Because the sound effect will come in a little bit late, but when, when it's playing, it's, it's, the, the components are, has already been destroyed. So it looks like I have to use the first, use the second method. Sorry, I never tried the, I never tried the first one, so I have to use the second one. So we have another audio source here, and I call it a button audio. Are we doing the same thing as the one in the 
that's the line in the button and we change this line to Okay, so let's see how this one works right now. Yeah, you guys can hear the effect. Yeah, if you want to do the same thing, make sure you put the button audio in, in the sample thing as well. Because if you don't, if you don't there will be a, an error here. So I'll try just directly in the samples. Yep. Yeah, that'll be all today's workshop. Thank you.